ESP is an open source system on chip platform that is the result of over seven years of research and teaching at Columbia University in the city of New York. Our research was and is motivated by the consideration that the information technology industry has entered the age of heterogeneous computing. Across a variety of application domains, from embedded systems at the edge of the cloud to data center blades at the core of the cloud, computing systems rely on highly heterogeneous system-on-chip architectures. These architectures are heterogeneous because they combine general-purpose processors with specialized hardware accelerators. Now, integrating many heterogeneous components, and particularly accelerators, is hard. Doing so in a scalable way is very hard. Keeping the heterogeneous system simple to program is even harder. The goal of ESP is to make this easy. ESP is an open source research platform. A platform is the combination of an architecture and a design methodology. ESP combines a scalable architecture with a flexible design methodology. ESP takes care of the hardware-software integration by enabling several design flows for accelerators. To do so, ESP leverages open source hardware components like RIS-5 cores and combines a mix of open source and commercial CAD tools. The ESP methodology is flexible because it accommodates different design flows and different CAD tools. The ESP vision is to allow application domain experts to design system on chips. Today, the ESP methodology supports already multiple design flows. This allows the creation of a rich library of heterogeneous components starting from different abstraction levels. First, designers can develop components with the traditional RTL design flow, starting from specifications given in System Verilog, VHDL or Chisel. Second, designers can leverage the ESP automation tools in combination with commercial high-level synthesis tools to create accelerators from specification in C-like languages, like C++ or System C. Third, for the specific but important machine learning application domain, ESP integrates the open source HLS for ML flow that allows application developers to generate the specification of accelerators as a synthesizable input for HLS tools from models in Keras TensorFlow or PyTorch. ESP enables the integration of newly developed accelerators with third-party intellectual property blocks that speak the AXI protocol. ESP includes the Ariane RIS-5 processor cores and the NVIDIA NVIDIA-LA accelerator. ESP comes with a graphical user interface that guides the designers through the interactive floor planning of the system on chip and has push-button capabilities for rapid prototyping of the SOC on FPGAs. The ESP design methodology is effective because it was developed together with the companion ESP architecture. It is this combination of methodology and architecture that is the platform. The ESP architecture is tile-based. For a given application domain, the architect decides the structure of the system on chip by determining the number and mix of tiles. For example, this picture shows 16 tiles organized in a 4x4 matrix. A tile may contain a RIS-5 processor, an accelerator, or a memory. Tiles are connected with a multiplane network on chip. The ESP architecture implements a distributed system that is inherently scalable, modular, and heterogeneous. Processor and accelerators are given the same importance in the system on chip. This system-centric view, as opposed to a processor-centric view, distinguishes ESP from other open-source hardware RIS-5 platforms. Each processor type contains a processor core that is chosen among those available in the RTL library. Currently, in the library, you can choose among the Ariane RIS-5 64-bit core from ETH Zurich or the Leon 3 32-bit Spark V8 core from Coven Geisner. Both of these cores can boot Linux, and both cores come with their private level 1 cache. Now the ESP tile augments these cores with a unified private level 2 cache, which is of configurable size, 
and the processor is integrated into the ASP distributed system in a transparent way. This means that basically no ESP specific software patches are needed, for example, to boot Linux. Amazing directory based protocol provides support for system level coherency on top of dedicated planes in the network and chip. Another network and chip plane supports IO and IRQ channels. These are used typically for various purposes, but specifically to program accelerators. Each memory tile contains one channel to the external memory. The number of memory tiles can be configured at design time and this typically varies from 1 to 4, depending on the size of the system on chip. Once these are configured, all of the necessary hardware logic to support the partitioning of the addressable memory space is automatically generated. Again, this is transparent to software. Hence, each memory tile contains one partition of the last level cache and of the corresponding directory. Their size is also configurable, similarly to the level 2. Additional logic implements the coherency protocol and all of the mechanisms necessary to support coherent DMA transfers for the accelerators. Each accelerator tile, instead, contains the specialized hardware for a loosely coupled accelerator that executes a coarse grain task. This can execute independently from the processor core and it typically exchanges a large amount of data with the main memory, or the memory hierarchy. The accelerator is encapsulated into a socket, and this socket is used to decouple the design of the network and chip and of the system from the design of the accelerator. In addition, it provides a set of accelerator-independent platform services, for example, the runtime selection of coherency models for the accelerators, fully coherent, last level cache coherent or non-coherent. Thanks to this concept of socket, each accelerator in the system can be designed independently from the rest of the system on chip. And this socket is also at the base of the flexible ESP methodology, which is flexible in the sense that it accommodates different design flows. The picture here in particular shows a third-party accelerator on the right that could be, for example, the NVIDIA NVDLA, and the newly designed accelerator on the left. Newly designed accelerators can be automatically synthesized from several different specifications. That could be C, C++, or System C through high-level synthesis, or TensorFlow and PyTorch through the HLS for ML flow plus high-level synthesis. Similarly, this accelerator could be designed using traditional RTL flows like, for example, in System Verilog, VHDL, or CHISO. The ESP methodology guides the designer in the selection of the microarchitecture for the accelerator through high-level synthesis, thanks to templates and to a memory generator that creates the memory subsystem for the accelerator. Notice that it is crucial that the memory subsystem is co-optimized together with the data path of the accelerator, and that's because the memory subsystem sustains the parallelism of this data path. This template defines processes to transfer data between the private local memory and the rest of the memory hierarchy. In addition, it pipelines this communication process with the internal computation. That computation part is what the designer is supposed to focus. Thanks to DSP services, in fact, the accelerator socket relieves the designer from the burden of reinventing the wheel every time with respect to, for example, configuration through memory map registers, virtual memory and DMA, data transfers from the PLM, caches or main memory, and the interrupt request for interaction with the processor cores. The network on chip interacts only with the socket, and thanks to its multiple planes, the network can distribute messages to maximize the accelerator's performance while preventing protocol deadlock. An interesting thing to notice is that if a third-party IP already implements some of these services, or maybe even almost all of them, the socket can be simplified in a modular way. When we recently integrated the NVDLA, the NVIDIA Deep Learning Accelerator, we realized two important concepts. First, the NVDLA is a configurable accelerator and it communicates with the processor cores and with the memory in the same way that any other ESP accelerator does. 
And so this is a confirmation of the choices we make when we designed the socket for the ESP accelerators. And second, we realized how the modularity of the ESP sockets allowed us to quickly synthesize a simplified version of such sockets so that we could integrate an accelerator like MVDLA that already implements some of the platform services. ESP offers a rich set of platform services that are organized in a modular way. This is key to rapid prototyping of full SOCs. At design time, it is possible to choose the set of services for each type. At runtime, many of these services offer reconfigurability options. For example, the coherence model of each accelerator can be reconfigured dynamically based on the particular workload. Or dynamic voltage and frequency scaling can be applied at the granularity of each tile. Similarly, at runtime and with the granularity of each tile, ESP offers other services like performance counters or operation monitors. Additionally, data flow graphs can be dynamically mapped to the NOC based SOCs to connect accelerators. And in this case, DMA transactions are routed either to memory as usual for shared memory communication or they are routed directly to other accelerators for point to point communication. If hardware sockets simplify for designers the integration of accelerators in an SOC, similarly, the software sockets consisting of kernel modules, device drivers, and a user space API library simplify the invocation of accelerators even from existing applications. For a given application, the software execution of a computationally intensive kernel can be replaced with one or more hardware accelerators by means of a single function call. For example, the figure shows the case of an application with five kernels, two executed in software, and three implemented with an accelerator. Data are shared across accelerators and processors, and no data copies are necessary. The accelerator memory is allocated in an efficient way to improve the accelerator's access to the memory hierarchy without compromising the software's performance and programmability. From a software perspective, the ESP library preserves the concept of virtual address space, therefore requiring minimal changes to invoke an accelerator from an existing application. The ESP methodology is flexible because it accommodates different design flows and different CAD tools. These flows are largely automated. This picture shows an abstraction of the main steps of the accelerator flow and the SOC flow. The color coding shows the different degrees of automations of the various steps, as labeled on the top right corner. In particular, for machine learning inference application on the edge, ESP integrates the open source HLS for ML package. This allows even the application specific portion of the accelerators to be automatically generated from Keras TensorFlow or PyTorch models. For generic applications, the template generator script creates a fully working skeleton of the accelerator with user defined registers, and this largely simplifies the manual effort of the design. The script also generates device drivers and unit test test bands, as well as a user space application, thereby enabling simulation, full system simulation, and full system prototyping out of the box. Thanks to the ESP services that are provided by the hardware socket and the software socket, application developers and hardware designers can focus on the high level specification of an accelerator. Decoupled from the issues of memory access, system communication, and hardware software interfaces. From the accelerator skeleton, developers can explore the space of the alternative design implementation by combining high level code transformation and high level synthesis knob settings. This design space exploration produces a rich library of alternative Pareto optimal implementations, each offering a different cost performance trade off point. Each of these implementations can be chosen and seamlessly integrated into an ESP system.
The ESP graphical user interface guides the developers through an interactive system on chip design flow that allows to choose the size of the tile matrix and therefore the corresponding network on chip mesh configuration, to choose the mix of components in the tiles, to select the desired Pareto optimal design point from the high level synthesis flows for each accelerator, to select the desired processor core among those available in the library, to determine the cache hierarchy configuration, to select the clock domains for each tile, and to enable the desired system monitors. The ESP system on chip flow is completed with the push button deployment on FPGA for full system testing and evaluation. In summary, with ESP we aim at contributing to the open source hardware community by enabling the realization of more scalable system on chip architecture that integrate more heterogeneous components thanks to a more flexible design methodology that accommodates different specification languages and different CAD flows. ESP was conceived from the start as a heterogeneous integration platform and has been tested through years of teaching at Columbia University in the city of New York. We believe that ESP is intrinsically suited to foster collaborative engineering across the open source hardware community. We hope that you find it useful and we hope that you contribute to our project. So start developing your innovative accelerator and let ESP integrate them for you.